Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds, and I'm standing outside a house. This house was bought by one of my students for 63 pounds. Now, it was creatively financed, and in this video, I'm gonna be going around the house, interviewing the student, and showing you exactly how this was purchased for 63 pounds. The interesting thing is, there's a house just opposite that was in national media. It was all in different newspapers, because it was being sold for a thousand pounds. And everyone's going, oh my gosh, this house has been sold for a thousand pounns. But here's the thing, the house that was being sold for a thousand pounds actually had a guide price of a thousand pounds. It actually was sold for 35,000 pounds. And on top of that, it had legal charges of 12,000 pounds. There was fire damage that was gonna cost tens of thousands of pounds to fix. So it actually, even though everyone was saying about how much of a bargain it was, it wasn't a bargain. This house was a bargain. So you're gonna see exactly how it was bought for just 63 pounds. Let's go and find out how. Here he is! Hey, Simon, how you doing, how man? You doing? All good, This yourself? is Josh. Josh as well. How old are you, Josh? 18. He's 18 years old! This story just gets better and better. Can I come in? Yeah, of course, come on. All right. So this looks pretty nice. This looks pretty good. Tell, tell, tell us what kind of condition was this in when you first bought it? It, it wasn't in good condition. It, look, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a really gritty reefer, but it was in a bad condition. It needed work done to it if you wanted to let it out and get the top, the top tier rent in this area. And this house as well. I wanted to go around this house because it's yours. You got the keys for it. It's in the bag. The chicken is hatched. But you, you're 18. You've got a whole bunch of other stuff in the pipeline, right? Yeah. What's yeah. going on in your life right now? So at the moment, I'm looking at my property business in two ways. I've got my own personal ventures and I've got my sourcing ventures. Sourcing wise, just a few days ago, we secured two deals. We passed them on to a client. She's very happy. We're just sorting out everything. We're finalizing that. Uh, on the other hand, with our personal ventures, we're looking for our very next deal. And You've got a massive deal you're looking at just now. <laughs> we got a big one. But before we get to that, we got, we got a couple of smaller ones. Yeah. A, a, a step above this, a step above this. And we're looking at those for sourcing. We're looking at those for a couple of clients. We might go for one ourselves. Yeah. But the big one, the, the, bit, the big one that we're looking at, is it's a huge, it's a huge commercial to residential yeah. conversion. Now people are gonna be feeling sick right now. They're gonna be saying, you know, you're 17, you must have, you know, have millionaire parents that just throw your your parents did put you through my education. Yeah. And they have they have helped you, mm -hmm. but no one's giving you money. No. No, no one's no. giving him money, okay? You're, you're, you're making moves, you've got support, you're getting mentoring, you're getting opportunities. So I want, I, want, I want you to go through this house. Most importantly is, everyone's gonna be thinking, how on earth did you, did, you, did you buy this for 63 pounds? So we're gonna talk about the creative way that you finance this, which would be amazing. But right now, take us through to the next room. Yeah, sure. So this is the living area, first of all. We originally, when we were looking at this, my mum's involved in property as well, so she's the boss when it comes to decorating. She wanted, the builders originally wanted all white, but my mum just said grey's a new black. So we've got a couple of tones of grey. We've got a little feature wall here. We've got a few more upstairs. We've got the feature walls make it. It adds a little bit of life to the property, it doesn't it? It just does. When you've just got a plain white room, it looks like a doctor's waiting area. You whack a little feature wall and it just brings a bit of life and a bit of colour to the room. So I like it. How much does fire, how much does fire cost? Well, funny story actually. This, uh, this came with a property. This belonged to the previous owner. We've yeah. literally just cleaned it up and it says France Banking News. Nice. Like, you know? So it can't have been in terrible condition when you bought it. Like I said, it wasn't in terrible, like it's uninhabitable. But yeah. if you want to get the top rent in this area, it needs something, it needs some work done to it. Yeah. Sure. How much did you spend on this in total? So this was 7,485. So you didn't spend a fortune on it. With the house down the road though, the thousand pound house, <laughs> that needed like, Fire repair, right? Had fire damage. Yeah, yeah, so it was fire damage. We were gonna look at it ourselves and we did think about it. We, we had the conversation like, should we just own the entire street? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we looked at it and we looked at the costs and the thing is that capital, it can be used in bigger deals and we can get a bigger return. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it, for someone, that's still someone's gold right there, isn't it? Yeah. And I want to talk as well about the area and stuff. And <laughs> we, Cause I know it's not the best area. Yeah. But yeah. it depends how you define the best. The figures are not too bad. All right, after you. So we walk through here, we've got a small little hallway, and then we have the bathroom. Now this was originally a wet room. Um, once again, it was this. This is probably one. This was the worst area in the house. It was really bad. Was it? Yeah, it was. It was bad. You, you've seen the pictures. You yeah, remember. I've seen the pictures. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> um, but with this, we've completely retiled everything. New toilet, new sink, bathtub wasn't even there. Like I said, it was a wet room. I like it. And honestly, the refurb, like, is this a new kitchen as well? 
Uh, no, so the tiles are the same and the decals here on the side are. We changed the, the uh, oven and hob sinks the same. So the kitchen didn't need too much done to it. The kitchen was still in pretty good, it was, it was in okay condition. It, lit, it just needed a little bit of a clean up. So you've touches. really done well with what you had yeah. on, a, on a small budget. <laughs> and people might be thinking as well about the finance of it. Like, hang on, you bought it for 63 pounds and then you spent this much, like what? Hold up, wait for it. We're gonna to get to exactly how this guy financed it, but how he did it was genius. Low maintenance, garden, like it. This entire part, it was completely trashed. We had old for sale signs, we had some of these wooden floorboards, they were, they were literally broken in pieces. So we got this all tidied up, it was all overgrown. And also at the back of the, as well, we've got some work done to the gutters. The, yeah, the gutters here, they were pretty badly damaged, so we got that changed as well completely. The carpets all over here, they were completely trashed. And if you want to look just here behind on the stairs, this entire sort of wall here, it, was, it had cracks going all the way through it. So how did you repair the cracks? So we got this completely replastered. We had a lot of plastering work done to the property. Nice. So we've got another feature wall here, as you already said. So another gray feature wall. And then we come into the other bedroom. And this is the last room. Another feature wall here. Got a little storage cupboard here as well. This is two, two bedrooms, right? Yep, two bed terrace. I like it. So the carpet looks nice. It's a good gray carpet. How did you choose this? Was it expensive? Was it cheap? Like, how did you come about to choose the carpet? Speaking to people in the academy, getting other people's experience and it put putting that into your own into your own business. Um, one of the things that you can see is with a with a plain cream carpet, you get a stain there. You can it's there. Yes. It's gonna be really hard to get it out. Yeah, because this is two colours, right? Yeah, they're Light all different. Grey, shades. dark grey intertwined. Yeah, exactly. So why did you do that? It if you get if, if there's a little stain, it'll conceal it and you just need the deep carpet clean to, to lift it out. Yeah, and you can't see it. You can you could you could spill something, but it wouldn't be so visible because of the two colours, it's deceptive to the eye, so like it. Did this need any plastering or was it just painting? Uh, this was just painting. Cool, and there's no, there was no wallpaper on. Actually not terrible, because it came in not terrible condition. It needed a big lift, it needed to be tarted up. Seven and a half grand. I know what people are gonna be saying. People are gonna be saying, how did you manage to do, you know, a, a new bathroom, carpets, how did you manage to do it? You even did guttering and stuff for just seven and a half thousand pounds. Some people are gonna think that sounds really cheap. How did you find the builders? Uh, power of the Academy. That's it, Power of the Academy. Speak to other Academy members, get a little bit of knowledge from them. You add some value to them, they're gonna add some value to you. That's yes. exactly what I did. And, and a fellow Academy member recommended the builders. Because you know what, if anyone doesn't know Josh's story, you were on Winners Wednesday very recently, and Josh literally shared the whole story of how he got into property, how his parents, instead of putting him through university, decided to put him through my training academy, which it seems to be paying off. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It seems to be well. paying off. I mean, you got this house, which is amazing. You got lots of other stuff stuff going on. Now, the question as well that I want to know is, when you found this property, you yeah. just joined the academy. Mm -hmm. You were seventeen. Yeah. Now you're only 18. How, how did you even, forget, forget how did you get a mortgage and how did you get finance? How did you even buy a house as a teenager? Like, how was that possible? Okay, so first of all, I didn't buy it. It was bought through a company. Okay, and but you, were you on the company? I, okay, so here's this funny story. Okay, go on. I was on the director's list. We tried to set up our business bank accounts, trying to get our compliance sorted out, both for our standard um, property business, our yeah. holdings, and my sourcing company. They wouldn't let it happen, so I resigned from both of them, and I'm still not back on the director's board yet. So what does that mean? Does that mean you don't own the house? Like I said, a company owns it, and I have been blessed that my parents have um, offered to be guarantors um, for the properties technically. See, directors. these are some of the nightmares that you will face. Obstacles, right? Yeah, exactly. See, people say, is it, people say this to me all the time. Is it possible as a teenager? I'm 16, I'm 15, I'm 18, is it possible? And the answer is, it's always possible but there's gonna be obstacles and hardships. So you said, so hang, on, hang on, so you found the house, you set up a company, mm -hmm. you were a director of the company, and you tried to buy the house through the company, which was working, but then you ended up having to resign because you're too young, yeah. and put your, have your parents on, who are operating as a guarantor for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's, there we go, that's the solution. What would you have done if your parents had said no? Well, look, I'm already gonna say here, I am very blessed that my family have been able to support me. Correct. But it's about being a problem solver, not a problem creator. Correct. Be creative. If you're in a network like the Academy or, or, any, or any such property network, try to find people, build relationships, build a network, and get one of those individuals to be a guarantor for you.
Yes. That it, it's about it's about being creative. And I always say this: if you can find the deals, if you can, you found this deal yourself. Yeah. No one gave you a penny. No. So if you can find these types of normally down crazy deals, and you can package it ready. There's gonna be people that are gonna be happy to jump on board with your vision because you've brought the vision. And I think the really important thing I'll say to any young people watching this or people that maybe feel like I've got a problem, I can't. Never say I can't, never say, instead you wanna say, okay, how can I solve this solution from the finding this problem? And, and the way you solve the solution is by just bringing value. You brought value by bringing the deal. Your parents have, have, have hosted it for you. Same story as me. My first property I bought, I was 17. Mm -hmm. My stepdad held it in his name for me. Yeah. That was my first, that's my first house. So mm. that makes perfect sense. I think what I want to know, Josh, is you say this house only ended up costing you 63 pounds. How? How did you buy this house for 63 pounds? It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so in the end, it did end up costing 63 pounds and that was the capital that was left in the deal. And we've done that as a buyer refurbish refinance rent. Okay, so you did the, you use the BRR strategy? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what is the BRR strategy for anyone that doesn't know? <laughs> so you're buying a house, preferably in a really bad condition where you can add value. You're then refurbishing the property and then you're refinancing it. So you're remortgaging the property and you're pulling up the equity. Ah, uh, so you, okay, so basically you're, you're, you're putting money in Mm -hmm. And you were able to borrow that money, again, based on how good the deal was. Yeah. So it, it all comes down to, if you're starting out, I haven't got money, I haven't got anyone that will help me, I haven't got, no one will help you probably because you haven't got good deals. No one will finance you because you haven't got good deals. So what Josh did as a 17 year old, after doing some training was he was like, and I said this to you, when you started the academy, I was, remember I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to worry about anything else. Don't worry about the X, Y, Z until you've started walking the A, B, Z. What you've got to think about is finding good deals. Find the good deals, people will then start getting around you. So Josh finds a really good deal and then suddenly, voila, like that. Suddenly people, banks, um, joint venture partners, academy members, parents, wh whoever. And people might say, and I know in the last video on the Winners Wednesday, people are like, I wish my parents helped me. Go and find a good deal then. And then maybe suddenly people will start because that's what Josh did. Your parents aren't really rich. Your parents aren't, they didn't give you a penny, but what they did do was they saw the deal, which you found, and they're like, hmm. And they agreed that they would finance the deal on the basis that they got all of the money back upon refinance. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay, yeah. so talk to me about how that worked. So, like you've just explained there, I found the deal, I presented the figures to them, I showed them complete in-depth detail, um, due diligence that I'd gathered on this deal. They came out, they saw it. And what I did, what I said to them was that you're going to be putting your money in and you are going to pull it out. You're already going to be leaving 63 pounds in the deal. Now for the rent, it's going to make that back in the first month anyway. Yeah. And for them all that they the way you got to look at it is you're recycling your cash. And for them, they've, they've done that. And now they've got a property for And they wanted to help pounds. you out as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you're their son. But the interesting thing is lots of our academy members who are also young, They've, done, they, they've managed to pull people in, other academy members, other, so figures wise, so what was the initial, I know you left 63 pound in, but what was the initial purchase price of this house? Because it didn't get attention from the media because it wasn't a thousand pounds, but you were creative. So how much did you actually initially purchase this house for? So originally the asking price was 45 and they were, they were very highly motivated seller. We managed to negotiate that down to 39,995. We're not paying stamp duty because we purchased the property five pounds below 40,000 pounds. Nice. Exactly. And where did you learn that? Academy. Academy, <laughs> that's the thing. Get education, money follows. Okay, so you bought it for 39,995. Yeah. That's how much cash you put in, which your parents put, put actually funded initially with a view to getting it back real soon. Yeah, exactly. You then spent, you've already said, you then spent about seven and a half thousand pound on the refurb? 7,485 to be precise. All right, cool. So you've put you've put 40 grand in approximately and then seven and a half grand approximately. So now about, about 47 and a half grand in. Yeah. You don't pay any tax or stamp duty because of the value of the house. Yeah. You've just had this house revalued. What was it revalued at? So before we get to revaluing, we of course had the legal costs as well, which were 984 and 350 for a survey. So yeah. the total investment was 48,813. We then, of course, the, the, the uh, valuation was 65,000. By that, on a 75% loan to value mortgage, we can then get that at 48,750. 
minus 48,813 by 48,750, that's leaving 63,000. Uh, 63 pounds. 63 pounds, yeah. So, and that's literally taken into account survey, legal, legal costs, exactly. everything, 63 pounds. So that is how you creatively finance a deal. Absolutely awesome. Now, what some people might say though, Josh, is, yeah, okay, it's 63 pounds, but it's a little rubbish house and a little rubbish area. So what's, what are the ongoing cash flow gonna be? So you put 63 pounds in, how much are the mortgage payments? Have you got tenants interested? What are the tenants going to be paying? What's happening on that front? Okay, so first of all, with the mortgage payments, that's ninety-seven pounds a month. So it's not—it's not breaking the bank. It's not—it's not tons. That's interest only, right? That's interest only, correct? Crazy cheap. <laughs> Crazy about cheap. It. And the about rent. It. So the rent, the achievable rent for the standalone property, we can get four hundred and seventy-five pounds. Yeah. But the thing is, the area. It's not the greatest in the world. It's not. It's rough. It, it's rough. It is. It is rough. But it's not. It's not super bad. But it's there. So you have to be picky with your tenants. That's one thing that I'd say to anyone, right? If you're investing in a, in a bit of a in a bit of a rough area, you gotta be picky with your tenants because most likely you're gonna get a bad tenant. So you want to make sure that your property, which is your product, it stays in a good condition because your tenant is gonna move out eventually. And if they've left the place trash, that's more capital that's having to be invested into this deal. Yeah. And then it's no longer an asset, it just becomes a liability. Correct. You've learned well, my friend. I've actually, I've actually, honestly, I've had houses that I've bought with no money down, but then they've become a liability because they've been rough and have bad tenants in there. So it's, I'm really glad that you've learned from my mistakes on some of my early, early houses. So if you're gonna be renting this out for 475, mortgage payments 97 pound a month, you might have obviously got a little bit of insurance and, and a couple of things like that management, but you're gonna be left with a, a monthly cash flow of how much you're expecting each month? Uh, we're expecting around about two, around about two hundred pounds a month. So the total investment to buy that house is sixty-three pounds. They're making two hundred pounds a month. That's two thousand four hundred a year. The return on investment on that is I don't know what it is, but it's going to be absolutely crazy sky high. That's we should nice. probably work that out actually. Yeah, we should work that out. So if he's making two thousand four hundred a year profit after all costs, that's his total annual profit divided by the total amount he invested, which was 63 pounds, means that his end return on investment times 100 is 3,809% return on investment, which is absolutely incredible. How do you feel? You must be well proud of this house. For a first deal, I'm really happy. And it's put, it's put into perspective that if, if you could do this as your first deal, think of what your 10th deal is going to be like. Think what, about what your 20th is going to be like. What's my advice been to you now moving forward? Like, what's the plan moving forward after this house? So just don't, don't jump in the deep end just yet. Try to scale it up one step at a time. Yeah. So the next one that we're looking at, we're not looking at a two-bed terrace now. We're looking at something a little bit bigger, a semi, uh, like a three-bed semi, which is what we are. Uh, that's our initial goal now. Yes. Because you're, you're always going to make mistakes on your first deal. And I, I said this to Josh. I said, start with something really small. Test that it works. See the return on investment coming in. See the money come back. Build credibility. Get people's trust. Build your reputation. And then what's going to happen is your confidence will go up. Your first deal is always your hardest. You're going to make mistakes. You don't want to make mistakes on a big, massive deal you want to make mistakes on a little deal and then get bigger and bigger and bigger and honestly I mean imagine imagine what he's gonna be doing when he's 25 years old I'm excited bro I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that Josh is just taking massive action like 18 years old most 18 years old I wouldn't even have the confidence wouldn't have the I mean honestly I'm impressed man Josh talk to me what's the three most important factors to being successful in business, even if you're starting with no money, with, with at an age where you're super young, what should people do? Number one, I'd definitely say be conservative with your figures. I've been like, I've been very conservative with these figures. Always work on worst case scenario because if anything, if it's better than the worst case, then it's just more, it's more money. Yeah, like we worked on the basis that you were going to be making two thousand four hundred, but that you'd factored in not just ten percent management, ten percent voids, but you'd also factored in things like damages and extra cost because of the area, because the area is a little bit... Talk, exactly. talk about this thing. So, about... the, what you just said about um, costs, voids, damages, it leads to this, for example, now we've just, we've repaired this very quickly, but this, this entire drain, drain someone pipe Someone kicked here. that. Yeah, someone kicked someone it. Someone literally just came and just <laughs> kicked this. <laughs> Who does that? Who would just kick a drain? But, but this is the kind of thing that sometimes you need to factor in. So you've got to be conservative on your figures, because if you don't ever allow for anything to go wrong, yeah and then something goes wrong, and then you're like, oh man, I'm down this month. So you've been really conservative. All right, next. Okay, so the next thing I'll definitely say is with that persistence, you're gonna have, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of obstacles, a lot of hurdles that come in your way. 
a little damage like that for someone they might just decide to pull the plug out on that yeah. uh, on their business so it's about when you have all these all these little things that happen that are going to try to put you down you keep in your mind the goal and what's 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 there for you the more you push what's going to happen the good things that are going to come along when you push through the hard time so definitely persistence is a really really big thing and that's something that i took along in sourcing i struggled to sell i struggled to sell deals when i got started yeah because i, I didn't know what i was doing but when you when you keep your mind focused on it you'll get there in time you, i'll you tell you what though on sourcing and stuff i would buy a deal from you like i would buy a deal from you because just because you're 18 years old you know your stuff, man. Like, you, you, you know your figures, you know your stuff, you're good at finding deals. Just some of the deals, you've been showing me some of the plans for some of the properties that you're looking at later today. I'm looking at them, I'm like, how is this 18 year old? But sometimes you need to forget, like, people think in terms of age, like, oh, you're 18 and he's 30. M most, most 40 year olds don't know anything about investment. So it's nothing to do with age, it has everything to do with experience, it has everything to do with whether you've been trained or not. Uh, you've been trained, you're experienced, you know your stuff, I definitely would buy a deal from you. Number three, number three, number three. So action taking all day long, yes. all day long. Action taking is the big one. If you have something that you need to do and it's for your business, it doesn't matter if you're tired, if you're yawning. You could be up at midnight, one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter what hour of the night you're up, you need to just take the action and just not stop until you get the job done. Best, best thing that I've done and, it, and it's paid off, it's paid off in this deal. Yes. If there's, if there's a webinar going on, if there's a call, attend the call. Yes. Prioritize that, put that, write it on your mirror, on your board, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you do it and put what you put in, you get out. Yes. I say it all the time, what you put in, you get out. Same with school. If you go to university, if you're going to party and stuff and you're going to have the nightlife in uni, you're not going to get as good as a degree. If you actually work, then you're going to get it. Same thing with business. Dude, ridiculously pleased to see your success. Very, very smart guy. Very, very smart guy. I hope you've learned a lot from watching this. Drop a comment below. What was the top thing that you learned from watching this video? Drop a comment below and also let me know what kind of video do you want to see next? What kind of projects do you want to go to? Do you want to see more of Josh? Do you want to see something a little bit different? Comment below what you want to see. If you want to learn more about the buy, refurbish, refinance strategy, you can check out this video right here. If you want to see Josh's winners on a Wednesday story, you can check that out right here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and you can do that right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.